Hey guys, Josh here, and you're watching Chip Skills. And today we're talking about talking. So, when we communicate with each other, it's pretty common that sometimes when we make sort of broad sweeping statements or, you know, we're trying to communicate an idea, we leave key pieces of information left out. Now, this is, this is not necessarily done on purpose, but it's more just between the whole brain to mouth thing. The brain's like, hey, we've got this, it's all good, and you just sort of spit it out. And yeah, often there can be gaps in the communication that we're trying to get across to someone. Um, and then in reverse, when we're hearing that information from someone, because there is key pieces of info that are missing, we often make assumptions and we can react to what that other person is saying without getting the full story. So for today, we're gonna look at um, I guess combating this sort of uh, breakdown in communication where we don't quite have all the information and we're going to look at some tools that we can use to uncover all that information so we can make an, a more informed decision. I guess the consequence of this is that, you know, if we don't have all the information and we make an assumption, you know, we become quite reactionary um, and that can lead to, you know, sort of pretty self-destructive conversations and then even sometimes conflict. So the two tools that we're going to use, one, uh, well, basically they're two NLP tools. Uh, one of them is the hierarchy of ideas and the other one is the meta model, which is specific to communication itself. Um, so they've been developed by a sort of group of psychologists um, and put together and they're, they're pretty sort of broad tools, but they can get quite specific. So the first one is the hierarchy of ideas. So if we look behind me, I hope that's big enough. Um, we start with an idea. Basically we can chunk up by asking um, certain questions. So we'll chunk up in levels of abstraction or basically we're, we're moving up to a sort of more bigger picture idea at the end. So we can ask ourselves certain questions. So for this example, I've used cars. So we can ask ourselves, well, um, what specifically do we use cars for? Or, um, you know, what is cars an example of? These sort of questions. And that can lead us up to transportation, which is the next idea up. So, you know, we can ask that same sort of question again. What is transportation an example of? Or, um, you know, what do we use transportation for? What higher purpose? And then we get up to movement. And then again, you know, what is the higher purpose of movement? And basically we can get to the real abstract where we get to existence. So as you can see, as we chunk up in each sort of level of abstraction, we move towards a bigger picture. Now, alternatively, we can chunk laterally, so we can chunk information that are at the same level as cars, so we might have planes, trains, boats, you name it. But for today's purpose and what we want to do, we want to get more specific. So we're going to actually be chunking down. So keeping with the same example of cars, we could um, chunk down, so we could ask ourselves, well, what's specifically about cars or what's an example of a car? So we might go to classes and categories. So you'd have your typical Holden, you'd have Ford as both classes and categories. If we wanted to chunk down again, you know, what's an example of a Holden? We might move down to Commodore. What's an example of a Commodore? And we might go down to SS. Um, alternatively, if we're looking at parts on a more general level, you know, we might go cars. Well, what's an example? Um, uh, what's something that makes up cars? You know, wheels. What more specifically about the wheels? We might get down to the hubcaps. What more specifically about you know that component? And we get down all the way down to lug nuts at the base level. So when it comes to language itself, we can do what we've just done here where we chunk down to a higher level of specificity. We can actually use the specific tool, the meta model. So like I mentioned earlier, when we communicate, we can commonly leave out key pieces of information. Now, we're able to recover those pieces of information by asking particular questions. Um, but first we need to be able to categorize the information and then figure out what questions we need to ask. So with the meta model, we can categorize these sort of um, incomplete sort of language patterns into um, distortions, generalizations, and deletions. Now the meta model itself is quite complex. So for today, I've actually only selected sort of a couple examples of each of the categories. If you want a full copy, hit me up and I'll send you one or put you onto a link where you can get one. So, like I mentioned, we've got distortions, generalizations, and deletions. So I've just got a couple of examples of each. I'm just going to go through the language pattern, um, the response that you may offer, and then, yeah, what you're sort of trying to uncover in each of them. 
Now, when you look at these, you might think, hey, I already do this, which is fantastic. Um, however, what you might find is when you sort of get caught up in the heat of the moment or you're not quite focused on exactly what someone's saying, it's actually a lot easier when you're physically reading it as well, is that you can be quite reactionary and we just communicate back to someone without getting all the information first. So that's the whole plan with this, is to get all the information so we can have a more informed response when we're communicating back to that person. So the first one is, you don't like me. So, not that you don't like me, but oh, I hope not. Um, when you want to recover that, uh, you know, you, you want to recover how that person came to that um, particular assumption. So it might be like, a simple question is, how do you know I don't like you? So recovering the source of the information and how they came to that belief. Another example might be, it's bad to be inconsistent. Now this is a common sort of phrase, and what you realize is that, you know, there's a bunch of these, and when you actually start questioning them, they sort of start to sound a little bit more ridiculous. So questions we might ask for it's bad to be inconsistent is according to whom, um, how do you know it's bad, um, all these kind of questions and we can, again, we can look at, well, you know, how did that person actually come to that assumption that, you know, this particular phrase is, is, is what they believe. Um, generalizations, um, an example would be, she never listens to me. So generalizations are things like never, always, um, everyone, no one, sort of really definitive, um, yeah, I guess generalizations. But yeah, sort of those real sweeping statements that are absolute, I guess absolute language is probably a better way to describe it. So it's either all or none. So for example, if she never listens to me, the first response might be never, because I'm sure she's listened to you once, otherwise how did you ever have any communication? Um, and then what you can do is you can flip it around and you can offer a counter. So it might be what would happen if she did listen to you. So that way when you offer a counter and you're able to get that person's response, again we can get all more information so we can give a more informed response back to them. Um, the next one is I have to take care of her. So again, because we're dealing with sort of that absolute language, we want to offer some counters so we can get some more information. So what would happen if you did take care of her? What would happen if you didn't take care of her? So you've got those sort of two options and then we can figure out a little bit more of where that person's coming from. Now the last one is deletion. So um, this is actually a really good one. Uh, there is no communication here. So when we look at the word communication, what are we thinking? It's actually the art of communicating. So it's a process word that's sort of been frozen in time. We've added an ION on the end of communicate and we've converted into like a pseudo sort of noun. So in any sort of scenario where you've got, it's called a normalization, but um, essentially a verb that's been converted into a noun, you want to convert it back into its like verb form. So for instance, in this particular scenario, so there is no communication here. Some questions we might be asking are, you know, who is not communicating with whom? Um, how would you like to communicate? All these sort of things. So we want to break down this noun, convert it back into a verb, and then look at recovering the source of the information um, or you know the subject that may be involved that we're comparing things to. Uh, the next one is, she's a better person. So we might be asking, well, better than what? Better than who? Um, compared to what? Compared to whom? All these sort of questions. So we can start to figure out, well, yeah, who are we talking about here? Now what you'll find is each, so for distortions I've got in brackets up here, how. So generally with the distortion that's what we're missing, like how that person came to that process. Um, with general, generalizations we're looking at the what, you know, what specifically are we talking about. And with the deletions we're looking at who, so it's generally like an individual or the subject. So when someone, you know, does throw out something and you, you know, you're thinking, well, this is quite a, there's, there's a bit of an assumption in the phrase they've thrown out or the question they've given to you, you can go through a quick checklist so you can figure out, do I know the how, do I know the what, do I know the who? And if you know all of that, then chances are you've got probably, you know, 95% of the information. But if any of those aspects are missing and you go through a quick checklist, you're like, I know how and I know who, but I don't know what, then yeah, it's a simple checklist of being able to get all the information that you need um, to give a more informed response. And then, yeah, hopefully the dialogue is of a lot higher quality than if you were to say, for instance, just react to the assumptive sort of language that someone may give you. So look guys, um, yeah, I know it's a bit more of a sort of, uh, yeah, a bit of sort of deeper academic sort of stuff today. Um, and yeah, it'll get you back in touch with your grammar, which um, I did when I did this course, I realized how inadequate it was. And I also realized that my handwriting is shite. 
Um, and that's a result of me having my pen license revoked in year five and I only got it back out of pity in year seven. So I apologize for how it looks, but that's just the best you've got to look at for now. Um, so look guys, give the video a like, a share. Um, yeah, if you want a copy of the meta model, hit me up, subscribe to my YouTube channel and until next time, peace.